It's Monday and the beginning of a new trading week. The major U.S. stock averages are starting off on a mixed note and we have plenty to pay attention to this week, including corporate earnings. Joining me now is Peter Cardillo of First Standard Financial. Peter, great to have you here today. Good to be back. Well, we have corporate earnings uh, at the end of this week and a handful of economic data. We did get that U.S. jobs report, so we do have a better idea of what's happening in the labor market. But what are you paying attention to this week? I think it's going to be all about earnings, you know, and I think the earnings are going to have to prove themselves in order for these uh, uh, lofty uh, 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 heights of the indices uh, to uh, continue to move higher. So, um, you know, um, we see the Dow basically struggling, trying to get above that 20,000 level, uh, but I suspect that if we get one or two good uh, uh, earnings uh, reports from uh, some of the industrials, and uh, uh, I think 20,000 uh, will be history. Uh, but basically, you know, uh, uh, the earnings uh, are going to have to uh, uh, come in at uh, at, at uh, top bo- at both top and bottom line uh, achievements, because otherwise, uh, I think the market might be headed into trouble. And of course, when it does come to the earnings reports, we'll be paying attention to the finer details, especially given the lofty valuations right now. Uh, We do get uh, economic data this week out from the U.S. as well as Fed speeches. What will you be paying attention to from the Fed speeches? Uh, Well, Fed speakers, you know, it seems that uh, they're all singing to the same tune. Obviously, they're all basically saying that uh, three rate hikes uh, next year uh, looks uh, appropriate and... uh, uh, that just tells me that we have a hawkish Fed on our hands. Um, and as far as um, um, earnings are concerned, you know, um, um, we are going to have to uh, see uh, perhaps um, uh, some of the multinationals come in with earnings that uh, are not being affected by the strength of the U.S. dollar. So I think that's probably going to be key. And last but not least, before we wrap it up, I do want to get your take on the latest comments coming out from uh, Prime Minister Theresa May over in the UK. Now, we know we uh, those comments did have an effect on the British pound, but she did say that she couldn't say whether she, uh, a hard Brexit would actually happen, but instead she'll do what's best for the British uh, economy, given that it will no longer be a member of the EU. So how are you taking those comments into account? Well, I think as we get closer to the formal uh, announcement of, uh, of beginning the process to exit the EU, I think uh, that might cause uh, some interruptions uh, in the marketplace. Uh, by that, I mean we'll probably see uh, the, British, the British pound weaken. Um, we could basically see the British pound get down to 115 uh, before the process actually begins and uh, that would mean a stronger dollar and then of course that uh, uh, could be a problem uh, for stocks in general. Uh, But again, um, it'll be very interesting to see uh, how the multinationals uh, uh, held up uh, in in lieu of uh, the stronger dollar. Well, Peter, thank you so much for joining me at the beginning of this week, and next week is a holiday weekend, so hopefully we see you at the beginning after the holiday. My pleasure.